We had John Lovitz on yesterday. Um, he was already just scheduled to appear to talk about a new film of his. Um, and he told a couple of Norm McDonald stories. And we just see how folks are responding to it and how we felt about the sudden passing of Norm McDonald, although it might not have been so sudden, but it was to so many people. And uh, I figured let's just keep talking about him because we've gone down a YouTube wormhole just one after another after another, his Conan appearances, his Letterman appearances, his SNL Turd Ferguson appearances, (laughs) you know, um, his ESPY uh, awards emceeing, and of course his appearances on roasts. And that's how we bring in one of my favorite people on planet Earth, a sweetheart, who's also one of the funniest guys I know on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line here on the Rich Eisen Show is the Roast Master General himself, Jeffrey Ross. How are you, Jeffrey? Ooh, great to be here. Great to have... Under such strange, strange circumstances, Rich. So, uh, did you know, or was there any inner circle that might have known about his illness, Jeffrey? Well, you know, he always had some weird medical stuff. He was He looked a little different sometimes. No one really thought to ask questions, and he didn't. He didn't show that vulnerability. Um, Just recently, uh, I heard that he told two close friends um, that he had cancer as a child, and then he had cancer again for the last decade or so. So it was something he kept to himself. He didn't want it to affect his comedy, the way people accepted his jokes, the way people talked to him. He didn't want to be pitied, is the message that I got. Um, Because it does hurt to not be able to say goodbye. It does hurt uh, for the living. But it also must have been torture for for Norm, Rich, to to go in it by himself like that. Well, I, I mean... I can't imagine. If I was sick like that, I'd want all the love and support. And you'd receive it as well. And I'm sure Norm would have also, you know, and it did appear that he did channel it, Jeffrey, into into his comedy. There, He did a stand-up um, joke on... on yeah, and I, I saw that video over the last 24 hours where, you know, we in the news business say that somebody lost their battle to cancer. <laughs> right. And the joke was, well, you know, somebody's going (laughs) that the last report is that you're a loser and that technically when you die, so does the cancer. So shouldn't it be called a draw? (laughs) (laughs) A double knockout. (laughs) That's what he said, you know, and it adds a little bit, I guess, of uh, I was blown away that it, it. Do you think that was born out of his own experience that he was going through? At the time? I believe it was on his mind. Um, also, when cancer runs in your family, as it does in mine and many, many others, right? it does make you think, well, there's a good chance I'm going to get it. And you do guide your life like that. My mom got sick when she was uh, very young. And it always thought to me, well, man, that's just what happens in our family. I guess it'll be me someday. At a certain point, I just started to go, well, it doesn't have to be. And if I, if I don't do those habits, those addictions, those things that may, may cause cancer, I may get lucky. Um, not everybody gets cancer for doing the wrong thing, but, you know, it's a sneaky, it's a sneaky bastard. But um, I feel like some of that gun to his head, knowing his days might be numbered, <laughs> may have fueled his fearlessness. He's the guy that, despite being warned by Don Olmeyer and NBC, would still go out and do those OJ jokes. He wasn't afraid to take chances. And I think part of it was because he had nothing to lose. He was alive. Jeffrey Ross, the Roastmaster General here on The Rich Eisen Show. When did you first meet him, Norm MacDonald? Oh, man. I met him. Um... It was probably 90 or 91. I was just transitioning from open micer in New Jersey to opening MC act in comedy clubs. Mm-hmm. And man, Rich, I was excited. Catch a rising star, Princeton. It was like eight shows over five days or something. Mm-hmm. I was really going to like get some stage time. And um, 
Rich Voss, a very funny guy, was the middle act. None of us knew each other. And Norm McDonald flew in from Toronto. He had just done a bunch of, uh, was it Sajax or something, who had the late night show? Or was it? Yeah, um, he did for a while. It? He did. Yeah. I think it was Sajax. And um, <sighs> he hit on that show and became like, you know, he was popping. But no one in America really knew him. Right. And Norm was, this is 91, you know, that type. This is when America, especially in New Jersey, most people wanted to see Andrew Dice Clay in yep. an arena doing nursery rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Norm comes in with this, like, you know, button-down shirt and a blazer, and hey, hey, ooh, like, you couldn't <laughs> barely understand him. And, and his material was tight, tight, and callbacks and crafted and honed and economical use of the language. Like, it was fascinating for a comedian. But if you were just a couple of knuckleheads with, with your dates to catch Princeton that you're used to seeing Hickory Dickory Duck. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he didn't bomb. He didn't, he didn't hit all the time. He bombed probably three out of the eight shows. And this is the, one of the craziest things, and I've never seen it before, Rich. After the shows, as people were paying their checks, Norm would go to the exit and greet every single customer Come on. as they left. Come on. The more he bombed, the longer he stayed there. And it was so hilarious, and it make, made him a mystery to me, an enigma to me right away, why he loved that part of it. And, and if he killed, he'd go right out the back to the green room and break out a deck of cards, and we'd play poker. He'd love to play poker. So my first experiences with him were very, very... Uh, uh, all in, we should say. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Ross here on the Rich Eisen Show. Yesterday, Lovitz told a couple of stories. One where, you know, he, um, <clears throat> about about his commitment and that when you told him not to do something, that just made him want to do it more and how they were performing for some sharks at a Biloxi, Mississippi casino. All these guys <laughs> and ladies who were comped to see him and Lovitz together and people uh, in the audience had a big problem with how filthy, how blue that Norm was working that made him only work more blue. And the end of the story was uh, Lovett said that they got, ba- he, he, he got them banned from the casino for five years. And I'm like, why? Because he really, because that's what he did on the stage. He goes, no, he was, he was busted counting cards. <laughs> is what he said. <laughs> And so, oh my, <laughs> oh my God! And then told the story of the Saget roast, where they, they he was told not to work blue, and and so he or, or he was told to tone it down, and then he went the completely other way. Is that what happened? I that had night? not heard that he was told to turn it down. Right. I thought he made. You was told to turn it up. To just. I thought he made the choice to go so soft that that was the joke. Because Saget's roast was one of the few roasts where he, uh, it was mostly comics, mostly body comics. And at that point, Saget was really digging into that stuff. Right. The Aristocrats movie had just come out. Bob was having this resurgence of Dirty Daddy and uh, you know, really a contrast from his full house persona. And we were all went in really deep. And I purposely wrote my speech without one curse word just to make a point that you didn't have to be funny to be dirty. Right. And, and, and that was my spin on it. Norm took it one step further and did Farmer's Almanac type show. <laughs> you know, that were, you know, like, hey, Cloris Leachman, <laughs> people say you're over the hill, but don't let, listen to them. You'll never be over the hill. Not with that car you drive. <laughs> and we looked at him like, is he having a stroke? But, <laughs> but I already knew Norm will always go for the best joke, the way he went on SNL, the way he went on late night shows. You know, publicists be damned. He wanted to have the most provocative jokes that the comics would talk about the next day. But on this show, he, he did a conceptual piece to throw softballs around the dais in a, uh, in a, in a in an affectionate sort of way. And, you can see when you listen back, the first few jokes, people are kind of polite laughs, nervous laughs. You know, I'm a producer. I'm almost panicking. Right, yes. Like, 
uh, like, what is he tanking this on purpose? Uh, we already had Artie Lang not show up. You know, we don't want this to be a disaster. But about five jokes in, um, I can start giggling. I start to sense that something's happening. And they buy it. The audience, by the end, <laughs> they said roaring as if he was, as if he was <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay, <laughs> but doing these very soft uh, jokes. Um, and I think it was a nice uh, denouement or a nice chapter from his post-SNL where he was provocative and pushed the envelope, especially with his OJ jokes. Um, you know, he's the one who famously said, well, it's official. Murder is now legal in California. Um, and, you know, this would really rile people up. You know, he was the one who said uh, the, the jury's in deliberation. So now they can either free him or get their heads cut off. And you didn't hear a lot of that kind of humor on TV. Mm-hmm. back then. And and now we live in a world where you almost can't do any of it, Rich. You know, you talk about cancel culture. Maybe Norm, you know, this is a bold statement. Maybe he didn't want to live in a world full of Don Olmeyers. Everybody's trying to take everybody's, cancel them. Everyone's trying to cancel everybody. So, you know, maybe he, I wish I got to talk to him at the end there. Um, But I didn't. Maybe he just, maybe his body just gave in and maybe he lost his fight. Jeffrey Ross Maybe. here on the Rich Eisen yeah. Show. Um, hey, before I let you go, uh, I, you put it in perspective for us. I mean, Letterman chose him as the last stand-up comic in his run uh, on his show. I mean, that was what what a spot, what a gig, what a what a what an opportunity as well as an honor for Letterman to say, out of all the stand-ups that have been on the show, you're my choice to be the last person to speak other than me on my historic television run. Um, right. What 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 is Norm McDonald's legacy amongst the the comedy community and everything else that you can put into words, Jeffrey? Well, he's somebody that you admired in that he he took his career in a patient way. He turned almost everything down. He only wanted to work when he knew he was going to be hilarious. He wasn't thirsty for attention. He, he wanted to be great or not be there at all. And that, that is something that really more comedians, I think, need to understand. You don't need to be at every party, every show. You can say no. And when you say no, you become a mystery, an enigma, and people want to see you even more. That, Rich, on top of his economic use of words, go back and listen to the jokes he'd written. They were perfect. There wasn't an extra syllable other than an, an occasional Canadian A. You know, there was nothing extra in those jokes. And that, that to me, was his legacy. And he's also a great guy and a, and a great friend. Jeffrey Ross, uh, you wrote a beautiful piece. Everyone should go check it out on your, you, you put into words, um, kind of what you just, uh, you just mentioned here on this show. Uh, go to uh, at the real Jeffrey Ross on Instagram. Hit the bio to read that piece. I love you, Jeffrey Ross. Let's. Uh, I love. I love you more, buddy. And I. I just saw you. Speaking of provocative comedy, mm-hmm. you really have some wonderful moments in the Vice film currently streaming called 9/11 Too Soon. About I haven't the seen that yet. The roast and um, the return of comedy in New York City in the weeks after 9-11. Well, you know I've been talking to you about that for a long time, being at that Hefner roast just a few weeks after, uh, you know, the attack on on, uh, the Trade Center and the country. Um, What a night that was. I haven't seen that. So what what do you think of that? That's out there right now. I loved it. It's a a full-length film. It covers uh, where all the comics were and what we were doing. When the Trade Center fell, I was home uh, with... uh, Dave Chappelle and Adam Ferrara evacuated to my house. And we really thought, you know, this is it. Comedy, we're not going to be laughing again anytime soon. And I wrote letters to the Friars and to Hugh Hefner and Comedy Central. And I said, if we don't do this show, the terrorists win. And that was not a cliche back then. That was something that would really happen. Right. That would be half a million dollars we were raising for the Twin Towers Fund would be, would never happen. 
And it wound up being, you know, a highlight of my career and a highlight for New York at that time. And people go, well, three weeks after 9-11, of course you could do a show. But what people forget, and you'll remember, Rich, is that we were walking around in a dust bowl, a human dust bowl. Yep. You couldn't write jokes. You couldn't think straight. It was a mission. If you were doing comedy, you weren't showing up stone wandering to a comedy club. You were a man, a woman on a mission. And the film really shows that. It shows people like Gilbert Gottfried and Bob Saget and, and, and really going for it. And a lot of the Saturday Night Live people and, you know, Mayor Giuliani's famous moment with Lauren Michaels. Whatever you think of Giuliani now, he really is portrayed in a fascinating, courageous way in this film. And there's a lot of really good funny moments. I highly recommend 9-11 too soon. I will, I, I, I will talk more about it. And now that it is and out. you look great in it. Very sophisticated <sighs> blazer, a big chair, <laughs> like a big macha. <laughs> 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 like a guy who knows what he's talking about. You know what? It was truly one of, being on that day as that night um, was truly one of the greatest moments of my life, to be very honest with you. Um, and just because being a native New Yorker to be there at the time, and I'm such a, an aficionado of comedy and roasts, and the person who put me on that dais was you. And, you know, it was one of those times where uh, I'm going out, and it was really weird to even go out to a social event in those weeks after 9-11 in New York City, but I just forced myself to do it. And that's when I ran into you that night. And, you know, we had a nice chat. Uh, we'd never met before. I told you I loved your uh, B. Arthur joke. Uh, I think I had you at hello when I said that. And, um, and then you're like, do you have a tuxedo? in town i'm like yeah sure and you're like come to the roast in two days if you're around and i was and i did and i'll never forget it and we have been friends ever since and it meant a lot that you know friendships these roasts bring people together and here we are 20 years later talking about it yep and we've shared a million meals and a million laughs together yeah Yeah. and uh these things really do live on uh whether it's norm's performance people still talk about at bob saget's roast or or, or that night where we all got together and defied the terror in New York. And do you remember any jokes, Rich? Did, did anybody come after you at that night? Nobody came after me, man. Because it first started, I was so damn far down the dais. I was in between. <laughs> I was I was second to last on the left, and uh, I was in between uh, the amazing Kreskin. And Frankie in the middle, uh, Muniz, and then, uh, <laughs> and then because there was a fight, a prize fight in Madison Square Garden, and the the roast started so late, people got up, and I was a seat filler, and I wound up being five uh, seats from the the podium, uh, in between Joey Pants, Joe Pantoliano, and who knew it, uh, Friars Club member Patty Hurst, and I'll never forget being there for the joke and all the jokes, and wondering what the hell was Gilbert Gottfried attempting and why everyone was so laughing about it, and it was the aristocrats joke, and there was a whole other movie made out of that. I'll never forget it. What a uh, night. Love you, Jeff Ross. Right Love back you, at bud. you. Thanks for the call. Thanks. You got this it. This is very cathartic. Thank you. Oh, you're the best. That's Jeffrey hey, Jeff. Ross.